Okay, in this video I want to talk about integrating rational functions of sine and cosine. And to do these we're going to make a substitution, t equals tangent of x over 2, and then we're going to use that to integrate. I've got two examples here. Neither one of these actually involve cosine, but the idea is exactly the same. So if you can do these two examples, you can do the examples involving cosine as well. But one thing you want to be aware of, okay, so you've got this t equals tangent of x over 2, how does that exactly you know, how does that tie into these? Well, given that substitution, t equals tangent of x over 2, we can come up with a bunch of useful formulas to substitute in. And then what we're going to do after we do the substitutions, we're just going to have a rational function in terms of t, and then we'll use partial fractions to solve. So I'm not going to actually do either of these examples in this video. I'll do these uh, in, in another video. First off, I just want to justify all the, the formulas and the substitutions that I'm going to use. So that's going to be part a, b, and c. Okay, so assuming that tangent of x over 2, assuming we let that equal t, the first thing I'm going to show here, part a, is that cosine of x over 2 equals 1 over the square root of 1 plus t squared. And this isn't at all very difficult to do. We just use right triangles. So for all of these, we're just going to use right triangles and trig identities. So I've got tangent of something. That's going to be my angle. So my angle is going to be x over 2. Well, I'm going to write t as t over 1. And remember, tangent is just the opposite side, the ratio of the opposite side to the adjacent side. So in this case, the opposite side would have a value of t, and the adjacent side would have a value of 1. So opposite over adjacent, opposite over adjacent. Well, we can figure out the hypotenuse just using Pythagorean theorem. So the hypotenuse squared is going to be t squared plus 1 squared. Well, if we take the square root of both sides, we'll get that the square root, the hypotenuse is the square root of t squared plus 1. Okay, so now to, to justify part A, it's just a matter of reading things off the triangle. So cosine of x over 2. So remember cosine, well, cosine is just the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Well, the length of the adjacent side is 1. The length of the hypotenuse, again, is the square root of t squared plus 1. I'll just write it as 1 plus t squared. And now we've justified our first formula here. Okay, So cosine of x over 2 is going to be 1 over the square root of 1 plus t squared. Likewise, we can get sine. Right, Sine is just the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse. Well, in this case, the opposite side is going to have a length of t. And again, the hypotenuse is the square root of 1 plus t squared. So that justifies part A. Again, all we're doing is just setting up a right triangle. In my examples, you'll definitely see me using these substitutions to, to solve the problem. OK, so there's part A down. Part B and... Part B isn't too bad, it's just using trig identities. So let's see, cosine of x. Well, cosine of x, I could write that as cosine of 2 times x over 2, right? I mean, if you simplify, we still just have cosine of x. Well, why would we do that? Well, I'm going to make use of the fact that cosine of 2 times, we'll call it theta, Remember the trig identity for this, so I'm just going to use a trig identity. So cosine of 2 theta, one way we can write that is as cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. So instead of theta, well, we've got x over 2. So we could write cosine of 2 times x over 2. We could write that as cosine squared of x over 2 minus sine squared of x over 2. But now we're just going to use the formulas that we just that we just produced. So cosine of x over 2, we said that's 1 over the square root of 1 plus t squared. But we've got cosine squared, so we have to square that. 
minus, let's see, sine of x over 2, we just said that was t over the square root of 1 plus t squared. But again, we've got sine squared, so we have to square all of that stuff. Well, if you square the numerator, we just have 1. If you square the denominator, we would have 1 plus t squared. We would just get rid of the square root. Minus, we would have t squared over 1 plus t squared. And hey, we've already got common denominators, so we can write this as 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared. Okay, so that's the justification for this first part here. Uh, cosine x is 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared. Again, you're just all you're doing is using a trig identity, and then we're using the stuff from part a. To get sine, we'll do the exact same thing. So recall that sine of 2 theta, we can write that as 2 sine theta times cosine theta. That's one of our good old trig identities. Okay, so that's one of our trig identities. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to say sine of x. Well, that's the same thing as sine of 2 times x over 2. So we'll get 2 times sine of x over 2 times cosine of x over 2. And again, now it's just a matter of substituting in what you found, what we found from part A. So sine of x over 2, let's see, we said that was t over the square root of 1 plus t squared. Cosine of x over 2, we said that was just 1 over the square root of 1 plus t squared. Well, if we simplify, the 2t will be on the numerator. And then we have the square root of 1 plus t squared times the square root of 1 plus t squared. That'll just leave us with 1 plus t squared. So that was another formula here that we wanted to show. Last but not least, we want to show that dx is going to equal 2 over 1 plus t squared dt. I think it's good, obviously, to be able to justify all these. Otherwise, you're just memorizing formulas with uh, you know, no real thought as to, to where they're even coming from. You just know, hey, somehow somebody said these are the formulas and somebody said they're correct, so I'll just go with that. So, so it never hurts to justify just to see where it's all coming from. Okay, so now we're going to show part C here real quick. Again, nothing at all too bad. So t equals tangent of x over 2. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the inverse tangent of both sides. So if we do that, if we take the inverse tangent of both sides, well, on the left side, well, we've got inverse tangent of t. On the right side, we're just going to be left with x over 2. What I'm going to do now is just multiply both sides by 2. So we have 2 times inverse tangent of t equals x. And now we're simply going to take a differential. So we're just going to find the differential. So the right side's easy. Uh, the derivative of x is 1, so we're just left with 1 dx. Uh, I think I hope I said on the right side. So on the right side, it's easy. The left side's not bad either. So all we're basically doing is taking the derivative of 2 times inverse tangent of t and then sticking on a dt. So recall the derivative of inverse tangent, or arctangent, is 1 over 1 plus t squared. And then we tack on our dt. And again, we could simply just rewrite this as 2 over 1 plus t squared dt equals dx. And again, that's what we wanted to show. dx equals 2 over 1 plus t squared dt. It's exactly what we've got. So now we have done all of our examples here. So again, in my next videos, I'm obviously not going to justify these. I'm just going to start you know, use, making use of them. But again, that's where they come from. It's just a simple matter of using right triangles, some trig identities, and then part C, you're just finding a differential.